It's September and this is the Library Roadshow. On the show today, comics, crafts, and a community survey. Welcome to the September edition of the Library Roadshow. I'm Mary Stein and this is a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. September is Library Card Sign Up Month, so check your wallet to be sure that you know where your card is. And if it's been a while, remember that library cards are free and easy to get. And speaking of free, we announced last month that all materials are now fine free, even when returned a little bit late. So there's no reason not to come on in and check on out. There's still time to participate in the library's community survey. We've already heard from 2,000 library users, but we're greedy for more. The results of this survey will help shape our master capital improvements plan from 2025 through 2035. The online survey is available in English or Spanish, and we even have printed copies in Spanish and Vietnamese. We really need to hear from you so we can plan for your future. The library is working with a number of community health providers this month. We'll host the JAG Mobile Health Screenings and launch a 12-part series called Project Power Diabetes Education. And for all you lifelong learners, Garden Discoveries and Master Gardeners are serving up a fall full of fabulous gardening programs. Everything from roses to trees and shrubs to raised beds and even cool weather plants, we wish. Futures Fund offers a special series of digital literacy workshops with Break Into Tech covering cybersecurity, Web 3.0, designing your own mock website, and becoming a developer without a degree. Professional organizer Alyssa Trosclair returns with her popular organizing series. Maxine Crump will present introductory sessions for her Dialogue on Race Louisiana series throughout the parish. Boo Milton's popular Write Time series for creative young adults is just one of our many programs for writers. And football fans will enjoy hearing from Chris Kennedy, author of Louisiana Tech's Joe Aye. For our younger patrons, it's back to school they go. So the library's free online tutoring is complemented by in-person tutoring, database orientations, classroom visits, and homework help. As far as early literacy goes, this month, the library is brought to you by the letter Q and the number 14, part of our Press Start Ready, Set, Read initiative for ages 2 to 4. You can sign up at any children's room. And to keep those youngest readers engaged, fall story times resume at all library locations. We'll host some special programs with Kids Orchestra and pull out all the stops for Talk Like a Pirate Day. Staff is getting ready to launch the 10th annual Maker Fair on October 7th. And finally, our author illustrator series returns for its 46th year. More on that later. For more information on these and many more programs, visit the library's website at ebrpl.com to check out the source and register via the online calendar of events. Free access to books, audio, and library resources are just a few of the benefits available to you when you get a library card. Need free access to a computer? You get that. Want free access to premium digital resources like Mango Languages and Lynda.com? You get that. Need to book a meeting space? You get that. Heck, you can even check out a telescope or use a digital printer with your library card. If you live in East Baton Rouge Parish, pick up your free library card from your local branch library today. Premium access to everything the library system has to offer is waiting for you. For every kind of service or resource that the library offers in the real world, we also try to offer something that parallels it in the digital library. So since our making and crafting programs for children, teens, 20-somethings, and even adults have proven to be so popular, we searched for a companion service that you could access remotely from home. And we found it in a new resource called Craftsy. It's time to find out more in the digital download. Craftsy is an online resource for creative makers of all skill levels. 
You can find everything you need from basic instruction to advanced techniques. It's a community of enthusiastic makers wanting to create beautiful things, express their creativity and share. Craftsy has more than 3,000 hours of content and over 2,000 courses. Craftsy offers tailored projects with step-by-step -step expert instruction. Courses include downloadable support handouts to complete your project. There's a creative focus for everyone on the Craftsy platform, with courses including fabric and yarn arts like sewing, quilting and crochet, food courses on baking, cooking and cake decorating, art courses and even gardening, woodworking and writing courses. So truly something for everyone. You can access Craftsy through the Libby app or directly from the digital library. For more craft courses, also check out Creative Bug. You'll find both Craftsy and Creative Bug in the digital library at ebrpl.com. This online platform fills a real niche in our programming arsenal. It's so easy to use and there are so many applications. Whether you're an independent crafter who loves to learn new things, or you're a scout leader, a teacher, a camp counselor, or even a parent with a van full of kids in search of activities after school and on the weekend, Craftsy can really deliver. All you need is that library card. Let's shift gears now and go beyond the stacks. Welcome to the sixth annual Mid-City MicroCon. We're here at the main library at Goodwood this weekend, celebrating all things comics, cosplay, and fandoms. Let's check it out. Hi, I am Ryan Motley. I am a cosplayer and streamer, and today I am dressed as Miles Morales from Across the Spider-Verse. So today we are at the main library here in Baton Rouge for the Mid-City MicroCon. Uh, this is really exciting because it's a way for uh, either younger folks who are maybe just getting to the point where they're being introduced to the library to get introduced to different fandoms, different nerdy things. Uh, and it's also a great way for families to come in and have something fun to do here at the library. One of the many speakers we had this weekend at the Mid-City MicroCon was Milton Davis, who spoke about World Building 101. I'm going to be doing a presentation on world building, kind of talking about the fundamentals of it, some of the things you need to consider when you're doing world building, and some of the different types of world building. So that's where your world building comes in. What kind of society are you going to have, are your vampires going to have? What kind of society are your mermaids going to have? That kind of thing like that. And how is that going to affect, how do they get away with not being seen and different things like that? So that's a little bit of, on a contemporary standpoint. I enjoy the creativity, and I also enjoy um, exposing people to the work. I mean, in a lot of situations, I'm talking to people that have never seen books like this before and people who have never seen themselves in books like this before. So uh, I enjoy both aspects. In addition to great world-building speakers like Milton Davis, we also played host to exhibitors of all kinds. The first and second floor of the main library was filled with cosplay enthusiasts sharing their art, their literature, and their talents. The teens were treated to a computer gaming league, which was organized by the Game Party Squad. We really opened up the library to the graphic arts and cosplay community at this annual event. Oh, well, libraries are very important. Um, I grew up going to the Bookmobile, which was based on our city library. It would actually stop on the corner of our uh, driveway uh, on our corner every day, and we would go down there and pick books up. So, I mean, it's a central point. I do a lot of my research there. Um, it gives people access to books that they might not normally have. So it's, a, it's an important part of what I do. Find more events like this at ebrpl.com and check out the photos from this event on our social media at ebrpl. Hats off to the Mid-City Microplanning Committee for producing such a successful Comic Con. Over 3,100 fans attended this two-day event. The drawing and content creation workshops and the teen film premiere gave attendees a chance to show off their own work to a very appreciative audience, and our vendors and performers gave us plenty to look at. There's not much else to say except it's about time to start planning next year's event. Stay right there. After the break, Tara Deering joins me for a chat about the library's 46th annual Author Illustrator Series, right here on the Library Roadshow. The East Baton Rouge Parish Library believes that preparing children to enter kindergarten is good for us all. That's why we created Press Start, an early learning initiative that provides a free activity booklet every month that explores early literacy skills through play and interaction at home. Get a library card, sign up for Press Start, 
at ebrpl.com slash kids. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. You're watching the September edition of the Library Roadshow, everything you need to know about your local library system. Okay, Tara, the library's author illustrator has been around for 46 years. Yes. What's on deck for 2023? Well, for 2023, we have a treat. We have Carol Boston Weatherford and her son, Jeffrey Boston Weatherford, coming to join us. It's a twofer. Yes, it is. So, so what do they write? So uh, Carol writes numerous children's books and middle, middle grade books. And Jeffrey has recently illustrated a couple of her books. And he is uh, a poet in his own right and um, very uh, justifiably so. Um, I kind of think he's a spoken word he, star. He really is, yes. he really is. And, and they're wonderful. Um, I got to meet them briefly at our ALA conference mm -hmm. in the summer and they're just a delight. So, so each one is going to bring something special yes. to our series. Now, it is a series. It's not just one program. So how does that work? So um, we will have our Thursday night uh, event here at the main library in the large meeting room. And we they want can to fill it up. Oh, we want to fill it up. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, it is open and free to the public um, from seven until eight with a reception and author signing afterwards. So who should come um, to that? families, people who are interested in meeting authors and illustrators. Maybe they might be um, avid children's literacy, literacy um, enthusiasts, maybe aspiring authors and illustrators themselves. And the kids um, themselves. And the kids, yes. We want the Middle kids school, to come. upper elementary, Upper mostly. elementary, yes. Okay. And um, we would love for them to join us. And they get to meet them and they get to ask them questions. And they would be happy to answer those questions. And you can also buy copies of their book. Yes. We have deep discounted sales books, um, and they will author, um, uh, autograph those books while they're here. So it's a good time to get presents for the holiday yes, season, it is. isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Perfect opportunity. So, so uh, and one thing that struck me when I looked at the list of the books, mm -hmm. that uh, especially for our older elementary readers and our middle school readers, their books are about real people. Yes, they are. Um, Carol loves to write about uh, biographies about real people who had a really big impact on our history and how we and what makes us the society we are today. That's right. And so this is American history. It is. In, in Absolutely. one night. Yes. Now, it is a series. So the very next day, there's something completely different. Yes. So the very next day on Friday morning, um, starting at 830, uh, registration begins at 8. We have a paid event that's a little bit more of a profes professional um, presentation. It's going to be for those librarians and teachers and serious author illustrators who have serious questions. We have a lot of people that actually will attend both Thursday and Friday because they are those really big enthusiasts and aspiring writers and illustrators themselves. Because that's mm -hmm. how you learn. Exactly. And and I know every year, I mean, 46 years we've been doing yes. this. Yes. So every year, the teachers, the librarians, are own staff we leave oh we're just so excited we're, yes. we're we're we've delved into one particular author's journey and yes. we've seen what inspires them and how they bring their stories to life yes and and i love the fact that especially for teachers and school librarians they always share something that the that these educators can bring back to the classroom yes. to enliven their uh, their teaching. Absolutely, so it, it's it's really outstanding. It's a wonderful event. So um, registration 
Registration is required for Friday. Um, the cost is $25. Those students get a discount for $10, which is excellent. Mm -hmm. So um, we do have some students that attend, every, you know, every year. Right, college and students attend and sometimes it, even high school students absolutely. who are in the creative arts uh, you yeah. get special dispensation to yes, come. Yes, they do sometimes. So, so. I mean, it is an educational event. And it then is. the Thursday night event, do you need to register for you that? You do not have to register for the Thursday night event. It is just open to the public. They can come um, and, and and join us for the for the event. And how do people find out more? Um, well, we do have brochures mm -hmm. like the one you're holding and there, it's and it, it's in our source as yes, well. On the cover, uh -huh. of course. Yes, it's also on all of our children's calendars. It's on our events calendar online, and they can always call their local library branch to get more information as well. So it's pretty easy, isn't it? It is very easy to get some more information about this program. I, I am so excited. You know, every year when you finally tell me who it's going to be, <laughs> I'm always very excited. Yes. After this break, we'll hear directly from Carol Boston Weatherford. Plus, we have book reviews from one of our younger library patrons. All that more coming up next on the Library Roadshow. The East Baton Rouge Parish Library believes that supporting the education of students is good for us all. That's why we provide access to live, in-person, online tutoring through Homework Louisiana, make available free test preparation tools through Learning Express, plus reference tools for all ages. Get a library card. Get free education at ebrpl.com slash homework help. Welcome back to the September edition of the Library Roadshow. My next guest is the 2022 Coretta Scott King Award winner for Unspeakable, the Tulsa Race Massacre. Carol Boston Weatherford writes children's literature and historical books, as well as poetry and commentaries. Carol's best known for her controversial criticism of memorial Pokemon character Jinx and beloved Dragon Ball character Mr. Popo. Today, she often writes with her son, Jeffrey Boston Weatherford, who's an illustrator and poet. Carol joins me now by phone to discuss her latest book entitled, Kin, Rooted in Hope. Carol, how did you ever get your start as an author? I was already a published poet when motherhood exposed me to a new crop of diverse children's books. I got my first children's book contract by name dropping. That got my work out of the slush pile. My first children's book, Juneteenth Jamboree, about the first African-American holiday, debuted in 1995. My career has since come full circle as I now collaborate with my son, acclaimed illustrator Jeffrey Weatherford. What's Ken Rooted in Hope about? Ken Rooted in Hope chronicles a mother's son quest for our family's roots and stories. Through first-person poems and dramatic scratchboard illustrations, we conjure the voices and visages of our ancestors. Ken traces our ancestry from colonial America to the Civil War to the Reconstruction era villages co-founded by my great-great-grandfathers. Ken is set largely at Y House, a large eastern shore plantation where our forebears were enslaved alongside Frederick Douglass. What inspired you to write this particular book? I wanted a project that my son Jeffrey and I could collaborate on. My agent suggested a treatment in the vein of Edgar Lee Masters' Spoon River Anthology. I found the ideal setting in Copperville and Unionville, Maryland, villages that my forebears co-founded. Both Jeffrey and I spent time in Copperville as children. Over the course of a century, our family bought, lost, and reclaimed land there, rooting me in that place. What advice would you share with aspiring authors? I would tell aspiring authors to write a lot, read a lot, join a critique group to get feedback from like-minded writers, and be patient with yourself. How can our viewers learn more about you and your work? You can find out more about us and our books by visiting cbweatherford.com and following us on social media. I'm Poet Weatherford on Twitter, and Carol Weatherford on Facebook and Instagram. Jeffrey is Hip Hop's Hope on Twitter, Jeffrey Weatherford on Facebook, 
and Tribe Chief, T-R-I-I-I-B-E-C-H-I-E-F, on Instagram. Thanks, Carol. Kids really respond well when they hear about real people in books like yours. Thanks for telling these stories. As a reminder, Carol and her son Jeffrey will be our presenters at the 46th Annual Author Illustrator Program on Thursday, September 28th, with a book sale and autograph session to follow. It's now time in the show to check in with one of our younger patrons to find out what they've been reading at the library. My name is Courtney Kane Scott. I'm in fifth grade, and my first book is Black Holes. I like Black Hole because they like so interesting. And then uh, I read a book once, How They Not Is a Hole. That is not whole. Um, and then they could send you, and then they have a one percent chance of them sending you to another universe. What is a black hole? First things first. Do you know that black holes are made of wrapped space and wrapped time? They have mass, but no matter. They're gravi- the gravi- gravitational pull is so great that nothing, not even light, can escape their grasp. They sound simple until you wrap until you wrap your brain around them. When I come to the library, I like to read about the weather, black holes definitely, and like how tornadoes and hurricanes work. Who definitely who the strongest. Thanks, Courtney Kay. It's great to see even our youngest readers making good use of the library system. Stay right there. You're watching the Library Road Show. The East Baton Rouge Parish Library believes that making things is good for us all. That's why we have maker spaces at four locations and a 3D printing service at the main library. The makerspaces have a variety of tools and equipment to enable both creative and practical projects. This includes 3D printers, sewing machines, audio-visual gear and much more. Get a library card. Get free access to makerspaces at ebrpl.com slash makerspaces. You're watching the September edition of the Library Roadshow, a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. Our community is rich with such wonderful resources to tap into from LSU, Southern, and BRCC. I first saw Dr. Prasanta Chakrabarti at one of our Saturday science lectures, and I heard him again during our Sounds of Science series. He recently joined us to share his new book, Explaining Life Through Evolution. Libraries are great places to read, to learn, and to meet great minds, like authors, educators, and scientists. We're here at the main library at Goodwood to meet someone who is all of the above. Let's check it out. I am Prasanta Chakrabarti, and I'm here talking about my new book, Explaining Life Through Evolution. And um, I just want people, especially people in Baton Rouge, to know more about the history and study of evolution, which is what I teach at LSU. Well, today I want to give a short presentation about the study of evolution. I'm actually going to start by asking people what they think an evolutionary biologist does, because I think a lot of people don't know, or they think that it's somebody with a, a lab coat who dresses like this every day, and in fact, I don't dress like this every day. I, uh, um, I'm sometimes in the field, and sometimes getting quite muddy, and I'll show some videos of, of me doing that, but also talking about the history of evolution through time, so talking about even well before Darwin all the way to Aristotle, but you, really, I, I just want to set it up for people to ask me questions, because I know there's a lot of misconceptions about evolution, and I want to work through those with people. I wrote this book, Explaining Life Through Evolution, um, particularly for an audience that may be a little wary of what evolution is. For me, I thought it would be a handy, handy little tool for other people to understand evolution and teach it to others, or to just learn about it for their own interest. I love libraries, and the role that libraries play in science communication is absolutely enormous. I love coming to this library. My kids are here with me now. It's such a wonderful resource. I love meeting people here. You know, you might meet somebody in the stacks who is looking at the same interests as you, so it really is a, a centerpiece of the community. So I love libraries, and this library especially. Discover more in-person and virtual author events like this one in the events calendar at ebrpl.com. Dr. Chakrabarti has written his book so that non-scientists can read and understand it. Very much appreciated by lifelong learners. 
The library has enjoyed a lively partnership with the science faculty at LSU for several years, and we're planning this fall's Science Saturday series now. August is National Black Business Month, and we're here at the main library at Goodwood to celebrate Baton Rouge's black-owned businesses and the people behind them. My name is Myra Richardson, and I am the organizer of the Black Business Black Party. The Black Business Black Party is an opportunity to celebrate entrepreneurship for our minority-owned businesses right here in the Capital Region. We're so excited that we have over a thousand people who will be attending this event today, and we have over 40 vendors ranging from food trucks, we have candle makers, we have your mom and pop shops. There's really truly something for everyone, whether it's your t-shirt that reps Baton Rouge or even your favorite bracelet company. These businesses aren't just filling the large meeting room, they're spilling out into the plaza as well. So this benefits both business owners and our community. It benefits our community because they get an opportunity to meet and find local entrepreneurs and really fall in love with businesses that they maybe didn't know about. And then for our entrepreneurs, this is their first time maybe showcasing their business. Some of them are veterans, but this is an opportunity for them to network business to business and even meet new people in their community who turn into lifetime customers. My name is Wajita Jones. The name of my business is Jafadish Accessories and More, and I sell candles, room sprays, air fresheners, all of the things that have sense that you love. It's been really beneficial for my business to be here because it's letting the community know about black businesses in the area and just exposure and coming out and having the community come out and shop with me. So all of this is connected to our program called Baton Rouge Updates. Baton Rouge Updates texts our community members every morning at 225-650-4166 if they text the keyword Baton Rouge, and we'll send you all of the events happening at Baton Rouge. So while we hosting this event, we also promote hundreds of other events in the Capital Region to really connect our community members because I think we operate in silos. And how do we connect communities? By giving them the information to decide for themselves. The library has historically been an amazing partner. They are always extending themselves out to the community. It wouldn't be possible without having institutions like this who truly support community engagement and really crossing the threshold behind those books and saying that it really, really matters that their community comes into this library and utilizes it no matter what the event is, no matter what the time is. They're always here and they're always a friend and a partner for our community. You can learn more about the library's career-related programs and business resources at ebrpl.com. Many thanks to Myra Richardson and her team for producing such a great event. Our small business librarian stayed busy all evening sharing what the library has to offer local business owners and entrepreneurs. His calendar is full of fresh appointments, but there's always room for one more. Contact him at smallbusiness at ebrpl.com. And now for today's contest. Visit the library's Facebook page at facebook.com slash ebrpl. What's your small business idea? And have you delved into any of the library's resources to help you get started? That's facebook.com slash ebrpl. And while you're there, enjoy. We're not your grandfather's library anymore. What's coming up on the Library Roadshow in October? 10 years of Maker Fairs. It's our 10th anniversary. Join me next month and I'll take you to another awesome library program near you. Tune into the show next month and I'll share another free resource from inside the digital library at ebrpl.com. Thanks so much for joining us on the Library Roadshow. And remember, your East Baton Rouge Parish Library is open seven days a week at each and every one of 14 branches, plus 24 seven on the web. Check us out at ebrpl.com.